Hello everyone! Welcome to your first lecture in Introduction to Psychology. The module code for this module is PSY4030. I'm your module leader, Marielle Marcano Olivier. My room in the Curzon building is office number C303. I work in that office with quite a few other lecturers, so if you get to know where my office is, you'll also find a lot of the other psychology lecturers there. So it's quite useful to get to know the third level of Curzon. I'm the person that you contact when you have concerns or questions about the module. If your seminar leader, if they aren't also me, um, can't answer your question. So um, if you want to ask me a question, then please feel free to email me on my university email address, which is marielmarcano olivier at bcu.ac.uk. However, if your question isn't personal in nature, um, then it might be best to post it on a forum. You can find the um, forums for this module on the Moodle page. Um, so if you have any questions, then perhaps consider posting it on the forum. This way, other people that have the same question as you can benefit from the fact that you've answered the question, because that you've asked the question, because they'll be able to see your um, question as well, and they'll be able to see my answer. However, if you're concerned um, about people knowing who you are and you'd rather have some anonymity with your question, then perhaps use the anonymous link to the forum. This means that people will still see your question, but they won't um, see your name. So this is a really great way of asking a question, even if you feel a little bit self-conscious about asking questions um, in class or on the forum. Now this brief session is just an introduction to the module, what to expect from the module and how you're assessed. So let's discuss the module logistics. Now, this module runs in term one only. It runs from week one until week 12. So until just before you break up for Christmas. In fact, when you leave for your Christmas break, you won't have any more assessments to do for this module. So you'll be able to enjoy Christmas or your winter break without having to worry about um, completing assessments or revising for an exam. So that's the great thing about this module. Introduction to Psychology is designed to give you a brief introduction of the five core graduate basis for chartership areas of psychology as outlined by the British Psychology Association. So basically it gives you an overview of five really important areas of psychology. Now these five areas are biological psychology, cognitive psychology, developmental psychology, social psychology and individual differences psychology. You'll have weekly lectures that you can access online in your own time. You will have weekly seminars that will either be online um, recorded for you or delivered face to face depending on what week it is and what group you're in. You'll have readings to complete and virtual online learning environment activities to complete as well. But I'll go through that with you a little um, over the next few slides. So what are the learning outcomes for this module? This is what we hope that you'll be able to do by the end of the module. Each module has several learning outcomes and for this module we have four. The first is to demonstrate an understanding of the five core areas in psychology. Now these again include biological, cognitive, social, developmental and individual differences. Learning outcome two is to make critical judgments about arguments in psychology and in relation to various psychological perspectives. So we'll teach you about psychological perspectives and expect you to be able to present some critique for those psychological perspectives. Number three is to discuss psychological theory and empirical work to form a balanced argument. So we expect you to demonstrate an understanding of theory and the studies that contribute to that theory and decide for yourself whether or not you think these theories stand up to evaluation. And number four, identify and use writing skills appropriate to the context and communicate information effectively. Now, 
In addition to the content that we deliver in this module, you'll also um, be able to, um, you, well, you'll also be expected to watch bite-sized videos, so 10 to 15 to 20 minute long videos once a week um, that help you to hone your academic skills. Now this is anything from um, writing a scientific essay to when to cite your sources. So what do we actually cover in the module? What is the module content? Well, I've mentioned a couple of times that we're going to cover the basics of five core areas of psychology. Within the biological um, lectures, we'll learn about the human nervous system, um, how the brain communicates within the brain and with other parts of the body, um, how um, the brain and our biological structures influence our motivation and emotion, and also the sex differences in brain and behaviour. In cognitive psychology, you'll learn about memory, about sensation, perception and attention, and about thinking and problem solving. During the developmental psychology lectures, you'll learn about development during the early years, development during the school years, atypical childhood development, and then also adolescence, adulthood and ageing. So development throughout the entire spectrum of life. I deliver the lectures on social psychology and individual differences psychology. In these lectures, you'll learn about attraction and relationships. That's coming up this week. Next week, you'll learn about behaviour within and between groups. And in week three, we'll learn social judgments and behaviour. We don't go on to individual differences psychology until right at the end of the module. You get guest lectures delivering the other content, so I return at the end of the module to deliver lectures on personality and intelligence. Now, these lectures will be delivered online only due to COVID-19 restrictions. The slides are available to download so that you can revise from these and go along with the slides as I'm um, as I'm discussing the content with you on the video. Um, so the pre-recorded lecture is available on my professional YouTube channel for you to follow or um, I'm going to upload them onto Microsoft Streams as well. So you can choose which way you access those. On this module we like to utilise staff expertise. So each week you'll have a different lecturer depending on the topic. The module is designed this way to help you get the most out of our teaching. So for example, I'm a social psychologist and I've done research into personality. So I deliver the lectures on social psychology and individual differences. Dr. Emily Harrison, your um, co, uh, your deputy course director, um, she delivers the lectures on developmental psychology. And John Galvin delivers the lectures on biological psychology. So basically, we select our lecturers who have the most expertise in these subject areas to deliver this content to you. However, I'm still your port of call as the module leader for this module. So if you have concerns, then please do feel free to contact me. In addition to a weekly recorded lecture, you will also have a seminar. Now, there are many different seminar groups in your year, so please check your timetable to find out when and where your seminar is for this module. And please check on the Moodle page to make sure that your group is either expected to attend the campus or have their seminar delivered online, as this will change week by week. If your seminar is being delivered on campus, you'll be taught in a similar way to how you remember from college, in small groups with lots of discussion. You'll also have the opportunity to ask questions about your previous online seminars. So basically, the in-person seminars support the online seminars by engaging in tasks associated with the content delivered online. If your seminar is being delivered online, the slides and videos can be accessed on the Moodle page. So basically, one week you will have video seminars that you can um, that you can complete in your own time and the next week 
you will be expected to come into university to complete tasks associated with the content delivered in that seminar. Your seminar group, however, cannot be changed. So what happens in a seminar? Now, depending on the week, your seminar will look very different. Your seminars will consist of either two videos supporting the content from the lectures, and these will be about 15 to 20 minutes long each, and one video discussing how to develop your academic skills and how to apply this to your assessments in this module and throughout your academic career. This video will also be about 15 to 20 minutes long. So in total, your videos will take up between 45 minutes and an hour of your time at some point throughout the week whenever you decide to access these videos. This is for your online only weeks, so that you will alternate between an online week and a face-to-face -face week. Or you will have one class on campus which you will, in which you will complete tasks associated with the video seminars and this uh, class will take about 45 minutes. In addition to this, you will have to watch one video discussing how to develop your academic skills and how to apply this to your assessments within the module and throughout your academic career. This is again about 15 to 20 minutes and to be completed at home. So you always complete the academic skills videos at home, but you do have in-class uh, tasks once every other week. Coming into class will only happen in your face-to-face -face weeks. So again, this alternates with your online only weeks. There will be some of you who are shielding and so who aren't coming into campus at all during semester one. For those of you who are in the shielding group and who will never come into campus during semester one, you will be doing one video um, supporting the content from the lectures, um, approximately 15 to 20 minutes long, and one video discussing how to develop your academic skills and how to apply this to your assessments in this module. Each of these videos are about 15 to 20 minutes. The remaining 20 minutes to half an hour of that seminar will be a live Q&A session with your seminar leader every week. So this live Q&A session is instead of that interactive face-to-face -face teaching that other students who aren't shielding will get in class. Because you're not able to come to class, we take this to you in a live Q&A session. In this, you can ask any questions about the module, any questions about the seminars. You can ask us to reword something, put something in a different way. Ask us if there are any videos that you can watch online to really cement that knowledge. Ask us our own opinion of things. This is dedicated to you, the Shielders at home. So we're trying our very best to make sure that you have the same content and the same interactivity as those students who are able to come onto campus. So this is the basic seminar structure. If you're in group one, in week two, you will, have, you will be coming into the university and you will have a research and relationships task, the best of social psychology task, and then you will have your academic writing skills online video to complete. If you are in the online group that week, you will be doing the researching relationships task, uh, sorry, researching relationships video, the best of social psychology video, and the academic writing skills video. If you are in group three, so you are not attending lectures at all because you're shielding, then you will be doing the researching relationships online video, the academic writing skills online video, and your live Q&A session. The next week, group one and group two will swap round and group one will be expected to complete researching relationships, the best of social psychology and writing in an academic voice online videos. And group two will be expected to do the researching relationships task, the best of social psychology tasks and again, the writing in an academic voice online video at home. Whilst in this week, group three will do the best of social psychology online video, the writing and academic voice online video, and again, an online Q&A. This seminar structure um, sheet is available on Moodle.
So if you're unsure about what you're supposed to be doing that week, whether you're supposed to be going into class or looking from home, then just double check on um, on here to see if you're supposed to be doing tasks which are co completed in person or online videos which are completed online in your own time. I understand that that might feel a little overwhelming and complicated, but please know that me and the rest of the staff are here to try and make this transition easier. Lectures will always be quite simple in this module. They will be accessed via the Moodle page in your own time. You'll be expected to watch one lecture per week. So for example, this week, the Welcome to the Module lecture, so what you're watching right now, and the social psychology lecture, Attraction Relationships, which can be found, um, the video of which can be found on Moodle just under this one, um, they make up your lecture for that week. Now, the next week, we have social psychology, behaviour within and between, and, um, between groups, um, social judgments and behaviour the week after, and then we have memory, sensation, perception and attention, and thinking and problem, problem solving. Each lecture has an associated seminar, which again, we've gone over in the previous slide. Following these, you will have the brain and nervous system, the biological foundation of emotion, early years developmental psychology, school years psychology, and a revision lecture but also in, within that revision lecture, some um, personality psychology information. In addition to your two hour lecture and your one hour seminar, we will expect you to engage in some virtual learning environment activities every week. So most, week, most weeks your learning will be complemented by an independent online virtual learning activity. This may involve completing an online task, contributing to a forum, reading journal articles or watching videos. It's important to note that these activities are all part of your learning and have been chosen because they relate to the assessment as well as your face-to-face -face learning activities. So as an example of a virtual learning environment activity, let's have a look at Moodle. Here we can see our first lecture that we're in now Introduction to the module, followed by the psychology of attraction and relationships. So you're expected to watch the introduction to the module and the relationships psychology videos. And following that, your post session activities are below. This week, I'm asking you to just watch a couple of videos about queer love um, in modern times. So these are TED Talks that give a broader perspective of relationships than research currently does, because research is very heteronormative. And so it's great to watch videos and listen to queer representation in the media, such as in TED Talks, to broaden our understanding of relationship psychology. Not all learning happens within textbooks and in journal articles. And sometimes it's good to see what's happening elsewhere, such as in, um, online websites such as The Conversation, or um, perhaps uh, watching TED Talks, which are uh, talks put on by academics. So now that we've gone over all of the stuff that you're going to be learning this semester, um, how are we actually going to assess what you've learned? Well, you have two broad types of assessments. Assessment one is actually broken down into four quizzes across the semester. The deadline for the completion of these is Friday the 11th of December 2020 at 12 noon. It will be better to complete them as we go along. Basically, every time you finish off a, um, a series of lectures, so be that social psychology, cognitive psychology, biological psychology, at the end of those weeks, a quiz will become available on Moodle. Now, these quizzes need to be completed by yourself. Uh, they can be completed at any time before Friday the 11th of December, but of course it's best to complete them as soon as they become available while the information is fresh in your mind. These quizzes do contribute to 
25% of the overall module mark. So it's very important that you focus and try your very best on these. Those with support summaries, as this is a flexible assessment, extensions aren't applied to this. So please work within your own understanding of your abilities and give yourself plenty of time to complete this. These quizzes will cover topics from the lectures, seminars, key reading and virtual learning environment activities. However, just because it's a summative assessment does not mean that you can't have these lecture slides open and have your books open while you're completing these quizzes. It's an open book assessment, so if you aren't quite sure of the information off the top of your head, then take a moment, have a look at the information and then choose the correct answer. The types of questions are mostly multiple choice, um, but some are drag and drop questions and other similar activities. Once you log into the quiz, once you begin the quiz, you'll have 24 hours to complete this and there are no exceptions to this rule. Now, each of the four quizzes is worth a quarter of the overall assessment mark and the overall assessment mark is 25%. So please make sure that you do complete these quizzes because overall this assessment accounts for a quarter of your module grade. Now, assessment two is a written exam. It's not an exam like you might have expected from school, but actually it's an online only exam. So it's timed and it should take you no more than a day or two to complete, but we've given you seven days to complete this. And so again, students with support summaries do not get an extension for this because you are already given an ample amount of time to complete this. You will get the exam questions on the 7th of December 2020 at 9am and the exam is due back to me on the 14th of December at midday via Moodle. The exam content is the topics from the lectures, seminars, key reading and virtual learning environment activities and this exam is worth 75% of the module mark. But how do you complete an online written examination? Well, the format of the exam is quite different. This is an at-home exam requiring short answers of 500 words per question, 1,000 words in total. So it's a little like coursework and an exam combined. On the morning of the last Monday of term, so on the 7th of December at 9am, I will post five questions, uh, question options on the Moodle page. You must read these questions and choose two of them to answer. So there will be five questions, but you're only expected and only required to answer two of them. 500 words for one question and 500 words for the other question, meaning this is a total of 1000 words for this assessment. Your answers must be between 400 and 500 words long, 1,000 in total, and written in APA format. You're not expected to include wider reading and will not gain extra marks for including this. This is in order to replicate the information that we would expect you to learn for an in-person exam. So you're expected to include the reading for the module from the lectures, the seminars, and the virtual learning environments, but scouring the internet for more information will not be necessary. You'll have one week to complete this work. This means that you can complete this on the first day of release and go off and have a wonderful winter break, or you can leave it until later. Um, or you can complete the coursework an hour or so at a time over a few days. It's completely up to you. It's totally flexible, as long as it's submitted by the 14th of December at midday. Again, for those of you with support summaries, this is a flexible assessment and so extensions are not applied to this. And finally, I'm here to help. I understand that completing or well, starting a university degree um, at the end or during a pandemic is really quite concerning and it might be something that causes you great anxiety. Um, it's not something that 
lecturers were anticipating on doing either. Um, and so we totally understand your anxieties and concerns. Um, so please don't forget that I'm here to help. Um, if anything at all is unclear, then please do post on the forum or drop me an email. You're not expected to fend for yourselves in this module. Um, and just because the module is delivered largely online does not mean that I expect you to figure it all out yourselves. If things aren't clear, then please do let me know and I can clarify these for you via the forum posts, via an email, or if necessary, we can have a video chat via Google Te well, via Microsoft Teams. So thank you very much for um, seeing this lecture, for viewing this lecture, and I really hope that you enjoy the rest of the lectures in this course. Next up is the psychology of attraction and relationships, which I really hope that you find very fun. See you later.